Here we have the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. Within the nucleus of the atom, we have the proton. And on the first orbital, or the first energy level, we have the electron. And the proton and the electron are two elementary particles. We use the Bohr model in order to derive the Bohr radius, the energy levels for the hydrogen atom, as well as this equation right here, the Rydberg equation. And today we're going to derive this equation. We begin by making the equation that the energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the electrical potential energy. Next, let's go ahead and expand what these equations are. We know that kinetic energy is simply one half mv squared. The electrical potential energy is the Coulomb constant times the charge of the first particle times the charge of the second particle divided by the separation distance between the particles, and we call that R. Now recall from this diagram right here for the hydrogen atom, there are only two elementary particles, the proton and the electron. We give those the symbol E, and the proton has a positive charge, whereas the electron has a negative charge. So we'll go ahead and substitute those symbols for Q right here. Now if we simplify the equation, we'll get that the energy is equal to 1 half mv squared minus the Coulomb constant times the elementary particle squared divided by R, or the separation distance. Next, we're going to relate the centripetal force with the electrical force, or the Coulomb force. We know that the centripetal force is simply mass times the centripetal acceleration, and we know that the Coulomb force is the Coulomb constant times the charge of the first particle times the charge of the second particle. We'll take the absolute value of both of those charges, and we'll divide it by the separation distance between the two charges, and we'll square that value, or we'll call it r squared. Now we can rewrite the centripetal acceleration as v squared over r. And we already know that the value or the symbol for the proton and the electron, we give it e. So we'll plug in e for q. Next, we'll go ahead and cancel out one of the r's so that we're left with mv squared is equal to ke squared. Now we'll go ahead and take this relationship right here and substitute it in to the mv squared in the kinetic energy formula right here so that we're left with the energy is equal to 1 half Ke squared over R minus Ke squared over R. Next, we'll factor out the Ke squared over R so that we're left with 1 half minus 1 within these parentheses right here. Now, if we go ahead and reduce this energy right here, we'll get that the energy is equal to minus 1 half times K times E squared over R. Now, the fourth step is we need to quantize angular momentum that the angular momentum for an object that's moving in a circular path is equal to the mass times the velocity times the radius. Now we're going to quantize angular momentum by setting it equal to n times h bar. Now h bar is simply Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. We'll go ahead and rearrange and solve for the velocity so that we get the velocity is equal to n times h bar over m times r. And this n right here is simply the energy level. Once again, recall that we established the relationship between the centripetal force and the Coulomb force. And we said that was mv squared is equal to ke squared over r. We'll take this relationship right here and substitute it in for this velocity term right here so that we'll get this reduced form. We'll go ahead and expand this expression right in here so that we get this form right here and we'll have to do some simplifying so that we get n squared times h bar squared over m times r is equal to ke squared. And we'll go ahead and solve for r. So we get r is equal to n squared times h bar squared over m, which is the mass of the electron, times the Coulomb constant times e squared. e is the elementary particle squared. This right here is the Bohr radius. So in deriving the Rydberg equation, you can also derive the Bohr radius as well. Now recall that we we came up with this relationship right here, that the energy is equal to minus 1 half times k times e squared over r. And just a moment ago, we found the Bohr radius. 
Next, we're going to substitute in this bore radius to this R value right here so that we're left with this form right here now. We're going to tag on this subscript N for the energy levels for the hydrogen atom. And once we do our simplification, we'll get that the energy is equal to negative one half times the mass of the electron times the Coulomb constant squared times the elementary particle raised to the fourth power divided by H bar squared times one over N squared. So this right here are the energy levels for hydrogen. So there will be some modern physics questions that require you to use this formula. So once again, in deriving the Rydberg equation, you can also derive this equation right here. Next, we're going to need to use this relationship right here. So the difference in energy, so we have the initial energy minus the final energy, is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. Now we can rewrite the frequency and we know that it's the speed of light divided by the wavelength. Right here we can also rewrite Planck's constant with 2 pi times h bar. And this holds true because h bar is simply Planck's constant divided by 2 pi. The 2 pi's cancel so it would bring you back to this h this is Planck's constant right here. What we're going to do now is we're going to isolate the inverse wavelength right here, so 1 over lambda, and that's going to equal the initial energy minus the final energy divided by 2 pi times h bar times the speed of light. Recall the energy formula that we found moments ago. We're going to plug this energy formula into each of these energies right here so that we get this form of the equation for the inverse wavelength right here. The next thing we need to do is we need to simplify this equation right here. What we're going to do, we'll factor out a 1 half m times k squared e to the fourth over h bar squared. This will leave us with 1 over n final squared minus 1 over n initial squared. The negative is what makes this true because right here we have n initial squared and over here we have n final squared. Because we left the negative in, we'll have final minus initial now. And we took this denominator right here and we just made it a fraction. This will make the simplification process just a little bit easier. Afterwards, we're going to multiply this term right here with this one right here so that it becomes m sub e, which is the mass of the electron, times the Coulomb constant squared, times the elementary particle raised to the fourth power, divided by 4 pi times h bar to the third power times the speed of light. This right here is called the Rydberg constant, and we give it the symbol R sub h. And this right here, once we substitute in for the symbol, this is the Rydberg equation, and that was how you derive the equation.